So just before we move on to what's new, I just want to point out kind of what you're going to see throughout this webinar today. Okay, so this is very similar to what most of our slides will look like. And at the top of the page, you will see the title of the release feature. So this just lets you know what this release feature is. Below that is the release number. Okay, so you do have to be on this version of Jonas in order to have access to that release uh, or that update. Okay, so this is why we definitely encourage you guys to make sure you're regularly updating your Jonas system. Okay, below that, you'll find a file path. So this is just where that feature or menu is located. And below that, we'll have a bit of a description of the release to provide you a bit more information on what's new. Okay, to the right of that, as you can see, we include mostly include a photo as well, just so you can have an idea of what that new feature looks like. So thank you for listening to all my help and all the intro bits, and I'm excited to move into what's new in Jonas Club Management. Okay, so first off, just pointing out some new menus we have added in Q1. Okay, so, and this is also in the copy of the slide deck that you have available to you. So whether you are the administrator or someone else at your club is the administrator, they can go ahead and add these new menus um, if they, you're needed for the club. So we've got F&B revenue budgets upload, online ordering threshold inquiry, alter guest status, and upload time record. Okay, and we're going to be talking about more of these features throughout the webinar. So the first what's new um, module I want to go through is accounts payable. And the first bit we have here is the fact that we it is now possible to actually delete an AP prepaid expense provided that no distribution postings have been made. Okay, so here is where we've actually added the delete button for you. Okay, so you can use that delete button directly within the review slash edit prepaid expense screen. So this really was added for that oops factor. Maybe you're creating a prepaid expense and you made it by accident or you realize you actually just don't need it. Okay, so we've given you that option to delete it. Again, as long as no distribution postings have been made. Okay, note that the delete button will only appear if no prepaid expense and postings have been made. So that's kind of a way you know if you can delete it or not. Okay, to continue on with that feature, when you select the delete button, the deletion screen will then come up because deleting a prepaid expense requires that a journal entry reversing that prepaid expense also be made at that time. Okay, so we're constantly trying to find ways to make things easier for you guys and we've tried to simplify this process for you. So as opposed to having to do a manual reverse process, we have tried to reduce a step for you where this will automatically be done for you now. Okay, so all you have to do is actually review and confirm the journal entry reversal and edit the accounts and amounts if you need to. Okay, from there, you can go ahead and preview and update. Okay, and you will also be able to see the posting just like any other posting in the supplier inquiry. Okay, the only difference is the AP inquiry tracer screen will be updated with the posting details and the prepaid expense button will no longer be made available. Okay, cash requirements list. So a new field has been added to the cash requirements list screen for automatic type lists. So you can use the exclude payment account suppliers field, okay, which you see right here, to exclude payment account suppliers from your regular supplier invoice selection. Okay, this option will be enabled when the automatic slash manual field is set to automatic runs. Okay. In order to make sure that your suppliers are included in this list, make sure that within the actual maintain suppliers program that you're enabling the payment account option for each applicable supplier. Okay. That way you can make sure that they will be part of the exclude payment account suppliers field option. Suppress auto credit. A new field suppress auto credit has been added to the AP Subledger Setup More Options screen. This field allows you to control the appearance of the auto credit screen when you're in the record invoices slash credit note screen. Okay. If the suppressed auto credit is enabled, it will actually hide the message offering you the choice of performing an auto credit when an identical AP uh, invoice code is entered. So for anyone who uses Birch Street, the AP Birch Street interface profile now has a new option that allows you to change the alternate GL reference and description 
which is used in the Convert AP Invoices Files program. Okay, so as you can see in the screenshot here, we've given you a few choices to choose from the default batch number or a combination of batch number and supplier name or doc description. Okay, so really based on your preference. Also for any uh, clients using First Horizon, we've added um, a new positive paid bank file format for First Horizon. Okay, if uh, you need, definitely encourage you to check out the specs button as it will provide a file layout details for everything you need in the file for that upload. So now we'll be moving on to what's new in Banquet and Catering. So double bookings. Any clients on here um, using Banquet and Catering double bookings, hopefully this is a big win for you. Okay, we've added a new field to for um, booking screen, display double bookings based on priority to your banquet and catering profile in the page two screen. Okay, this allows you to change the display order of bookings on the main booking grid when there are double bookings for a time slot. Okay, so enabling this field will use the priority field in the booking slash room status code screen to actually determine the order in which to display the double bookings on the grid. Okay? This field will be made available after you've enabled allow double booking. So double bookings were actually previously organized by booking number. So i.e. whoever booked first would appear first in the list. So it is really based on your preference. If you wanna organize by booking number or if you wanna organize by priority. Okay, so we've given you guys that option to choose what works best for your club. Okay, just to follow through with that as well, here's the booking slash room status code screen to show you the priority setting. Okay, so depending on the code and what you set your priorities to, and if you are using that flag in the previous screen, and this will sort your double bookings based on priority. Okay, so if we have any South African clubs on the line, we have enhanced the select forms and forms options program for the standard South African VAT invoice for banquet and catering bookings. Okay, this is to now reflect whatever currency symbol is used in the country it is used in. So previously no symbol was used, so we hope that this enhancement just allows for better presentation for you. Okay, the configurable invoice design screen um, within the select forms and form options program, we have added the ability to suppress the club name and address on the standard user configurable banqueting catering invoice design. Okay, so this new field is enabled by selecting the print club and address on CEO and invoice form within the main screen. And this field can be enabled based on your preference and just allows you to have a separate suppress option specifically for the invoice. Okay, so really just depends on how you want that to appear. Last one for banquet and catering here. Within the registration page, we've added an email address field. Okay, so this will pre-fill when you select your member or guest. It'll pre-fill their email address as, long, as well as their address info. And all of this information pulls from the setup slash edit member profile. Okay, so you can always edit the information fields specifically for this event registration if needed. And when you export the event registration list, you can now choose to include email as a column within that report. Next up, we have club inventory. Okay, one new feature to point out here for you guys, and that's the ability to, ex uh, when exporting SKUs through the export SKUs utility, you no longer have to export all SKUs during an export. Okay, so hopefully this is a big win for some of you, is you can actually set the export based on the SKU status. So using the include all SKUs dropdown, you can filter based on the SKU status that you want to see. So maybe I want to run this utility only to see my active SKUs, or maybe I want to see only my inactive, okay? So again, just giving you that option. And in addition, the SKU status has also been added to the export report for you, so you will be able to see that within the report. So moving on, we have club management, and a few things to point out to you guys today for that. The first one is the fact that we have added a new code to the club report generator for the guest slash table name. Okay, so for those who might not be familiar with this feature, we actually um, allow you to have the guest name or table name directly on a chip. Okay, if you want to utilize this feature, you can enable it in your system parameters 
a setup areas and it's this get guest slash table name at start of chip. Okay. This feature is really cool because if you turn it on, you will be prompted when you're bringing up a new chip to enter the guest or guest table name at the start of a chip. Okay. This actually may be super handy for your servers to help identify guests instead of every, you know, chip just displaying cache to know that it is a guest chip. So if you do have that enabled, or if it's something you do want to enable, you can now report on that. Okay? So the new report code is JHH guest slash table name. And like you see in this screenshot here, you can add that to the club report generator. And it's just a way to go ahead and report on the guests that attended at the club. Okay? So next up is one of the new programs, which is to uh, update uh, Alter guest status to allows you to bulk update your guest status. Okay, so this can be found in club management member file menu. And like I said, this program provides you the ability to change the member status code attached to guests in a batch process. Okay, so this program uses the guest age as the criteria for selecting which, um, which guests to update. And the guest age will include guests that are the specified age on the day the program is run, right? And the program will use your guest database. So this basically allows you to do a batch update as opposed to updating your guest status one by one by one. Okay? Now this batch process can be run through club automation. And if you're not familiar with club automation, it's basically a way to set up programs to run automatically for you. Okay, if this intrigues your interest, okay, or you want to learn more, I definitely encourage you to speak out, to, uh, reach out to your account rep, and they'd be happy to provide you with more information. Okay, in the upload cash receipts file program, we've added a new format for the PNC Bank. Okay, and just like with another screenshot you saw earlier, you can use the spec button to find out file layout details. Um, so we have a question. If you're not sure who your account rep is, um, Greg may be able to chime on this once he takes over, but um, support, I believe, would be a good place to start as if you let them know your club name, they'll be able to point out who your rep is. So great question, Susan. And of course, uh, Greg, feel free to send me a message um, if there's or anyone if there's a better way to go about finding who, out who your rep is. Okay, so for any clubs utilizing common database, you now have the ability to restrict specific club codes within the common databases transfer member balances program. Okay, so this can be enabled within the common database profile using the restrictions button. And then you can just go ahead and flag the applicable clubs to restrict transfers to. Okay, so member inquiries. Previously, if you marked a transaction as hidden, maybe because the transaction was a reversal or made by mistake, okay, the transaction would still appear in the account inquiry screen, but would appear as inactive. Okay, so we've added a flag within the basic club profile club options to actually not show hidden transactions. Okay, so as again, this is kind of based on your club's preference, whether you want to see those transactions inactive and still within the inquiry, or if you want to hide them completely. Okay, so this field should be carefully used because remember, it will suppress all hidden type transactions from the inquiry screen. Okay, and as per usual, the hidden transactions will still not appear on member statements. So regardless if you use this option or not, your members will not see inactive hidden transactions on their statements. Okay, um, anyone who uses the dues renewal letters program, we have um, added a new feature. And before I move on to that, just to point out, this is the member file and the fee billing schedule where this member has a bill to member. And that means that the bill to member is actually paying for those charges. Okay, so we've added a new flag to suppress that bill to member from the dues renewal letter if you so choose. And to show you a bit more here, it is available in both the programs you see on screen here. Okay, so if you're using the dues renewal letter feature that outlines the member's fee billings, like I said, you can actually enable this option to suppress bill to member fee billings from the billing block. 
Okay, so what happens is enabling this flag will result in if a member actually receives a dues renewal letter and someone else is paying for that service, okay, they will there will not be a fee billings that said pay by paid by this bill to member. Okay, that will actually remove it from their letter completely and they'll only see what they're responsible for pay. Okay, without the flag on, the member will see the bill to member on their dues renewal letter to see who is covering those charges for them. So ultimately, again, this depends on your club and your membership and what they would prefer to see who's paying or if the payment's already covered, maybe I don't need to see that. Okay, so as I mentioned, this option is available in both these programs, the dues renewal letter and the mail merge dues renewal letters program. I, and you can use one or the other. And this is just really a preference. The Mail merge option allows you to create more of like a fancy, quote unquote fancy, <laughs> Word document where the dues renewal letter program is our original program, which is kind of just nice and basic. If you don't care to kind of update it, just complete and send out and you're good to go. Okay, third party uploads. So if you utilize third party POS uploads, for some third party POS uploads formats, we have added the ability to store stats from the upload files. Okay, so note that the club must have the Jonas TOS module to enable the storage of the stats, and they are only recorded against the main or blank POS partition. Okay, sales reporting can also be done using the club report generator and the Z codes. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna head and stop sharing my screen for a moment, and hey, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and give control over to Greg who will go ahead and uh, continue with the presentation for us. Perfect, so just to address one of the questions we got in the questions box a little earlier, um, somebody asked who their account rep was. And uh, since we're showing you all these new modules and features, if there's any module that you don't have at your club that you're interested in, um, if, if you wanna know who your account rep is and who you have to, to ask about these new features and modules, uh, just let us know in the questions box what club you're calling in from. And we can always uh, send you a, a private message with who your account rep is. Uh, but after today's session, you can always give Jonas Support a quick call and they can always uh, fill you up with that info as well. But let's go back to the, uh, the presentation here and we'll, we'll keep going. So the next module is hotel management. So if any of you have the, uh, the hotel module at your club, the first feature in here is for the, uh, the folio printout. And uh, so if you do any sort of group reservations or even if you do any member sponsored res reservations, uh, whenever you print out that hotel folio, it will now list that group name or, or the, uh, the member who sponsored that particular reservation. And, and sort of uh, one more little feature that's connected to that one a little bit, uh, since you can have member sponsored reservations in hotel, uh, the next feature here is with the uh, report generator in the hotel module, you can now include sponsored reservations as a, a column in your report. And for those of you who didn't know, you can actually create your own custom reports in the hotel module. Uh, we have a lot of preset reports for you, but you can create your own and, and now you can bring that field into your reports. Uh, up next is the marina module. So for those of you out there who have a marina at your club, uh, we do have a module for you if, in case you didn't know. Uh, but we just made one easy, uh, quick little change to this program uh, for this quarter at least. And uh, it's in the member inquiry screen. And like I said, it's just a simple one. We added the uh, the email address and cell phone number up to the, in the top portion there. And we've also sort of uh, changed the screen a little bit to match a lot of the other member inquiry screens, uh, just to make the program a little bit more consistent. Uh, moving over to payroll. Now in Jonas, we have a US and Canadian payroll module. And uh, we've made a few changes to both of those modules, but these next two or three uh, slides here are, are for payroll in general, so both Canadian and US. Uh, and the first one here has to do with your uh, types of absences and your, uh, your hours codes. So you, you can now link an hours code to a type of absence. And, and what that means is when you link those hours codes to the absences, uh, when you look at the, I'm just gonna go to the next screen here, it's sort of a two part slide. Uh, when you look at the employee calendar in payroll, uh, now you'll be able to see that on the employee calendar, the fact that they have absence codes, and the fact that the hours are linked to them now. Uh, next one, uh, still in, in the payroll system, both Canadian and US. 
Uh, when you print out your earning statements for your staff in the, the Jonas standard earning statement design, we've made the font a little bit bigger. Uh, now this is just a, a pretty simple improvement that we've made to the module. But the reason why I left this slide in the presentation is because, um, I mean, I, I always tell clubs we have a development team here at Jonas for a reason. And the reason why we made this change to the program is because a lot of you out there requested that we make that change. A lot of you wanted the font just a little bit bigger. Um, so think about, uh, you know, everything that you use on a day to day basis in Jonas and, and how you think we can improve the program. Uh, just let us know if you have any feedback for us and we can always make changes like this uh, fairly easily for you. So I just wanted to kind of mention that as we go. But up next is uh, Canadian specific payroll. And, uh, and the first feature here is the fact that we now have the letter designer program in Canadian payroll. And I'm actually going to jump into my Jonas system and just quickly show you how this program works or how you can use it at your club. But um, essentially, this program allows you to create a, a custom email or a custom printout for within the payroll system. And so I'm just going to open up my Jonas right here. And so now if, if you want to, you can go into administration and letter designer there. And now we have a drop down for the type of form for uh, Canadian payroll in this drop down. Uh, there is also one for US payroll for all of our US clients out there. But in here you can create a, a document code or a body of the email if you want to email out all your staff. And this is just one example that I created really quickly here. Uh, but you can sort of customize these emails and, and bring in certain fields so that they'll populate automatically, like the, your employee's name and last name that can auto populate. But every single field that you see on the right hand side of the screen here, you can also auto populate those fields and uh, include those custom fields in your uh, email to your employees. So I just created a, just an example here of uh, an emergency contact info email. So if you wanted to update all those fields for your employees at your club, you can very easily create that email, customize it, and send that out to all of your staff. So nice, simple, easy little improvement there, but definitely something that can uh, make it a little bit easier to use in Jonas. And that feature sort of works into the next one here for Canadian payroll as well. And that's the fact that uh, when you're sending out your T4s to your employees, uh, you were always able to, to send those out and to email them to your staff. But now we've made it so that you can customize that email a little bit more. So it's completely up to you what the subject of those emails is. Um, the body of the email, you can either create just a standard body of the email, or you can use that letter designer program and you can create your own custom body of the email when you're sending out your T4s. Uh, this next slide here, I, I wasn't going to include it in today's presentation, but I decided to anyways. And, and the reason why I was hesitant is because this feature isn't actually available for all of you out there. This is a feature that uh, only we have access to here at Jonas. But the reason why I decided to include it is because I wanted to let all of you know out there that um, if you're ever making changes to your employee records in Jonas and you want to make changes uh, more in a bulk fashion, uh, we can help you out with that. Uh, so any sort of address changes, pay rate changes or TD1 changes, uh, if you can get that into Excel, uh, into an Excel file, we can just do that upload for you and just change those fields by themselves. So if you're ever looking to make any bulk changes to your employee records, payroll system, you certainly can do that. And, uh, and we don't need to re-upload all your staff into the system. We can update existing records now too. So if you just wanted to make pay rate changes, that's no problem at all. Uh, on the US payroll side, a couple, just one new feature here actually for this quarter. Um, and it's a simple one. If any of you out there have uh, just one department set up in your Jonas, uh, we've just made it so that you don't have to choose that one department. We'll just auto populate it with that department already. Made. So just a really easy, simple one, just to save a little bit of time. Now moving over to the point of sale, we have lots of great new features here on the point of sale. And, uh, and the first one is one again, that I'm sure a lot of people don't really know out there that you can do, but we have all of these uh, sales and revenue reports uh, in the point of sale side. And specifically, there's a section in our reporting tools for uh, food and beverage revenue analysis reports. And some of those food and beverage revenue reports includes uh, your uh, budgets. 
and you can include budgets for uh, covers, beverage revenue, and food revenue. And so if it's easier for you, if, if you have a really detailed budget, you can now upload your budget into the system, uh, which I'm sure would be a little bit faster than just manually uh, entering in all those covers and beverage budgets. So as long as you can get that uh, your budgets into Excel, then you can just upload that right into the program. It's no problem at all. Uh, the next one here has to do with the mobile point of sale module. And for those of you who haven't heard of it yet, uh, we do have a mobile point of sale in Jonas. So your servers certainly can bring up Jonas on their phones or on a small tablet, and they can walk around the club and use that instead of just a, a regular point of sale terminal. Uh, but the change that we've made to this module is, is the fact that when you're looking at your menus, you can either have an expanded view, in which case you see all of the different items that are on a particular menu, or you can use the collapsed view, in which case you just see your menu headers and you can click on that and expand that further. So whichever is easier for your staff to navigate your menus, completely up to you. Um, just note that we do have a little search button up there as well, if that's easier for you. Okay, also to do with the mobile point of sale, um, we've always had this feature in your core Jonas program, but now it's uh, the same feature is, is migrated over to mobile point of sale. And that's the fact that the, uh, the date in Jonas changes automatically for you. And typically most clubs are set up to, to have the date change automatically at 4 a.m. And so that will now carry over to the mobile point of sale side. Um, now hopefully you're not actively ringing things up at 4 a.m., but just in case you are, uh, the date will change at that time. Uh, now we have another module in the point of sale side and that's uh, online ordering. So once again, for those of you who haven't heard, we do have an online ordering module. Your members can order food, uh, beverages or merchandise, anything you'd like really on your website. And part of that online ordering module is that you can have all of those orders from the website go into the online ordering queue. And when it's in the queue system, uh, it's completely up to you when you want to send that to the kitchen. And so if you're looking to send orders to the kitchen in bulk, you now have the ability to select multiple orders and send all of those orders to the kitchen all at once. Okay, another one here, this is actually a, a really big feature that I know a lot of clubs were really requesting and really wanted us to make. Uh, and we have made it, the feature is now in Jonas. Um, this one is still on the topic of online ordering, but we've added the ability to create online ordering thresholds now. Now, what does that mean, online ordering thresholds? I'm actually gonna uh, open up my Jonas and I'll show you exactly what that means. So I'm just gonna go into my online ordering setup here, outlet. And if I go into this schedule of my outlet, we have a section here for thresholds. And so what I've said for my online ordering program and I've just done just a partial setup here, just so you have an idea of how this works. But what I've said here is every Monday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., so essentially during my lunch service, uh, we're gonna have 30 minute intervals where we only allow 10 orders to come in every 30 minutes, just for my lunch service. And so that really just allows you to sort of control the flow of all the orders coming in, just so you don't have 100 different members submit their order all at once and then you know, your, your one chef in the kitchen has no idea what to do with 100 orders. So you can now control the flow of all those orders coming in from the website. And you can do that for every day of the week, certain times of the day. It's completely up to you how you want to, to handle that at your club. So this is just one example I have for my lunch service. Every 30 minutes, we allow 10 orders. But like I said, totally up to you for how that works at your club. Okay. And once again, the reason why we made that change is because a lot of you requested that we uh, add that into the system, and we did. So again, if, if you have any suggestions for us, feel free to send that in. Um, be in contact with us for all these new features. We can certainly improve the program for, for what you want to see. Uh, the next one in point of sale has to do with your cash drawer. So just in case any of you out there have that cash drawer open every time you do a transaction, you can now set it so that if you don't have a cash float, uh, the cash drawer will not open every time you do a transaction. Just in case that was happening to anybody out there, you can now stop that from happening. 
Uh, also on the point of sale, if uh, any of you have uh, a credit card settlement button on your menus, uh, you can now make it so that the calculator doesn't pop up anymore. And uh, for those of you who aren't as familiar with point of sale, typically what happens is you would hit the credit card button and then it brings up a little calculator showing you the total of what you're going to be charging the member. And so you can just OK that total or you can adjust that and say maybe the member only wants to pay $20 with their credit card, the remaining amount some other way. So now if you want to, you can suppress that calculator from popping up and it will just go right to the credit card screens right away. So much more similar to the, um, the quick member charge if anybody uses that button. All right, another a nice little interesting feature here. Uh, if you wanted to remake or reorganize your menus and recolor code things, we've added a bunch of new colors into the system. So things like orange, dark orange, um, navy, teal, totally up to you which colors you want to use, but we've added a whole bunch of new ones. Okay, next one here has to do with the, the toolbar on the point of sale. And I think I'm gonna jump into my Jonas again and, and show you this feature. Uh, just because I wanted to highlight the fact that we made this new change here, but also I wanted to highlight the fact that you have a, a toolbar in your Jonas system, which I find a lot of people kind of forget that it, it's up there and it's usable. But the actual change that we've made in the system here is that we've uh, adjusted the description of all of these functions you can add to your toolbar to match the, uh, the menu design program descriptions as well. So again, just making Jonas a little bit more consistent in our descriptions. But for those of you who haven't really heard of the Jonas toolbar before, um, I know it sounds pretty basic, but uh, a lot of people forget about this one. Um, whenever you go onto your point of sale, if I ring up one of my members here as an example, okay, now disregard my member there, I know it's a funny looking character, but uh, at the top of your screen, you have uh, this top toolbar with a bunch of functions up there. And, uh, and the good thing about that top toolbar is regardless of what menu you're clicked into, the top toolbar will always stay the same and those buttons are always available for you. So any functions that you use on a regular basis, by all means, if you want to free up some room on your menus, you can move those functions up to the top of the screen instead. Okay. Uh, now moving over to the tea time module. Many of you have our Jonas tea sheet. Uh, we've made a change to the end of day process so that you can exclude all of the tea time statistics for the day from your handicap reporting and from your round of golf rules. So this one, I'll give everybody an example for how this works. Uh, let's say you're doing some repairs to your golf course and let's say you only have a few holes that are actually open for play. Uh, or another example is if, uh, if you get a lot of bad weather coming in and your members were only able to play, let's say three holes. Um, obviously, you don't want those that round of, of only three holes uh, contributing to their total rounds of golf. There's a lot of clubs that restrict certain members to that so that they only have six rounds of golf per year, for an example. So if you wanted to exclude that uh, the bad weather or the, the incomplete round of golf from their total rounds of golf, you can now do that. Uh, also in the tea time module, we uh, we have a new interface to a, a company out there called uh, Caddy Now or Caddy Link. And so if, if you do have a Caddy program at your club, I would definitely check out those two programs there. Uh, great, cool little uh, programs. I checked those out myself. Very interesting. Uh, but even better now that they integrate directly into your Jonas system. So for all of you who have Caddies out there, check that one out. Uh, now the other one for tea time has to do with the the gin system which is the a handicap system um, now this particular feature we did applies to uh, these couple reports that you see on the screen um, primarily most clubs would use that missing scores report and, and that report is just if somebody logged around in jonas but they didn't enter their score online that would be considered a missing score and so previously to this, uh, the gin system would always want to take two nine hole scores and try to combine that into 18 hole round. Uh, but now we've sort of prevented gin from doing that and we've kept those two nine hole scores separate. and We'll count them as two actual nine hole scores. Uh, another feature here, this feature is specifically has to do with uh, South African golf courses out there. Uh, but Part of this feature is available to all of you out there, and I just wanted to highlight this at the same time. 
Uh, and it's the fact that you can actually include tea time information on your point of sale chits whenever your member uh, has a purchase in your pro shop. So if your member comes in and you're checking them in for the round, but they're buying a whole bunch of merchandise, you can have their tea time, their uh, player names in their group, their bag number, all of these little fields here, you can include that on their point of sale receipt with their merchandise purchase as well. Uh, but the, the feature in particular that we've added in here, this is sort of a two-part slide, uh, is the fact that you can add a handicap allowance on your T-sheet if you're running any tournaments. And let's say you only allow 80% of members' handicaps, that can print on your members' receipts. And I've given you a little screenshot here so you can see what that looks like. So now we know that if the member tees off from white tees, they have a two handicap, blue tees is a plus two, and red tees is a plus six. Okay, and then uh, just one little quick feature here in the Timekeeper module. And that's the fact that you can do an upload of, uh, of time records. And so if any of you have a, a third party company that handles your clocking in and clocking out, it's very easy to now upload that information directly into Jonas. Uh, all you need is a, an Excel spreadsheet in this format here. It's really just your staff codes, date, time, uh, job, department, as well as their pay rate. As long as your third party clock in and out program can get that information into Excel, you can upload that into Jonas. And then with that upload into Jonas, you can run all sorts of reports that we have in the system uh, that integrate throughout your Jonas program as well. So, nice simple one there, but it allows you to, uh, to integrate with all sorts of third party clocking and clock in and out softwares. But next up is the uh, Jonas Activity Management module. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to uh, Rob Lumena. I'll let you take over. Thanks, Greg. I'm just gonna share my screen. Okay, so what uh, I'm gonna go through is what is new in Jonas Activity Management or JAM um, in the first quarter of 2022. As Alyssa said earlier, I am the product manager for Jonas Activity Management, so who better than me? to go through these changes. So we made a change to court booking um, related to paid booking. So if you are a club that takes payment in advance of the booking and then you need to make modifications to those bookings um, after they've been settled through point of sale, uh, we've given you the ability to edit some limited information on those paid bookings, restricted to reservation notes, booking notes, and the ability to send reminders on demand. So uh, previously you couldn't click through on a, on a paid booking, it wouldn't launch anything. We just indicate the booking has been paid, that has changed, and when you do, you can see the booking log, you can see the client info, and like I said, you can modify the notes as well as send reminders. Of course, the reminders will go out on their own mm -hmm. as per the schedule. However, if you wanted to send one um, immediately, you have that capability now from within inside a paid booking. Moving on to dining reservations, uh, what we have added in uh, a release in January was the ability to send out responsive email confirmations. And when I talk about responsive, what I mean is the email works equally well um, on a desktop or on a mobile device, be it a tablet or a handheld. The um, message itself will just scale itself down and reflow so it, it's visible. Um, you know, we have a lot of clients requesting something for uh, responsive communication responsive confirmations because sometimes the uh, confirmations appear quite small on a mobile device um, and hard to read. Um, but now you can send out HTML email, which is responsive. And as you can see on this slide, Alyssa has included a video on how to set those up, but I will also take us through those. Um, so you can see here in the configuration screen, which I'll show in a moment, um, you have the ability to modify a number of the um, areas and you can um, you know, just key it in if you want to, or you can reuse uh, messaging that you had in your um, previous confirmation template. Um, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. But the only thing you can edit is the detail of the reservation that's automatically generated by the system. It'll include, you know, where it's taking place, how many people are dining, the people that are actually assigned to the reservation, as well as any uh, occasion information, as well as preferences that may have been stated by the member uh, when they made the reservation. So with that, I'm just gonna take us into my JAM system. And where you go to do this is inside system administration. You can see there's a forms button here or with an activity setups on the left, you can click on forms. Um, and then you can go to one of your dining forms and you can convert it. I've already gone through the trouble of converting it, but I'll show you the process. So basically here, 
by default, it's going to be in this advanced form designer. You want to switch it to the responsive email designer, then this button will modify. And when you click on this button, it'll launch that screen I was showing you a moment ago. So um, the image. So what you need to do is grab an image from the internet. So the easiest way to do that is to grab it off your website. Um, you can just right click on it and copy image address and then paste it into this field. So when I click in there, it's just showing me the URL that I pasted in. I just went to my uh, Mystic River website, right click on the logo that was there and inserted it. Um, in this header section here, and you can turn on this um, show section headers. This is the title section, just a message that you want to appear atop um, the confirmation and then an opening statement section, you know, welcoming them, maybe advising them on dress code. As I said, this body section is not configurable. It's auto-generated, just this little uh, no entry one-way sign there. Uh, that indicates that you can't modify. This is all sample data we're seeing right now. And then finally, a closing statement section. So ideally for you know final messages, any information, any calls to action you want to tell them about who to communicate with if they have any questions. And like I said, on the left-hand side here, you have all this information that was previously in your confirmation and you can move that information into a section. So if I wanted to replace what I have here, I could just delete it, take this information, drag it in, um, and that information is now present in that field. And anything I want to save, I can save and close. You can also send a test email, so you can take a look at it on your phone and your desktop. But there's also a preview here, which is just launched in the web browser, and it'll show you the message as it's currently configured. And it's my browser window is scaled down already, but you can see as I scale up, um, text gets wider and it looks okay on the desktop. And then as I shrink it down, the text reflows and it looks okay on a mobile display. So just a quick way to test, just to see, you know, if you like the line breaks um, in all the text you have there, depending on the format in which you're viewing it. So uh, a nice way, because we know a lot of people are, are looking at confirmations on their mobile devices to have the confirmation um, appear appropriately on those devices. I'm not gonna say the changes, so just to re recap, um, go to System Administration. In the ribbon, you have this Forms button right here. That's what you want to click on. And then go into your Dining Reservation Confirmation Forms. You may want to check to see which one you're currently using. That's located in Dining Settings, in Notifications, and then it's this Confirmation Form listed here. So you can select the responsive one and apply that. Um, but like I said, you may want to find out which form is actually going out. Check that, and then that's the one you want to modify because that'll have all that information on the left-hand side that you can just drag and drop into the new one. Um, this is only available for dining confirmations right now. We are um, going to be extending it into other modules as well to provide them with responsive confirmations. Oh, one more on the machine, back to the presentation. Sorry, guys. Another thing we added with the dining reservations is the ability to support um, thresholds, cover thresholds by facility group. Um, so the rationale behind this, and again, to Greg's point earlier, this was requested by many clients where they have multiple dining facilities all using the same kitchen. Um, so instead of what we had previously, where you could set up a, a threshold, a cover threshold or a reservation threshold on an individual facility, um, which allowed you to limit the number of reservations you took there, you could take uh, more reservations in another facility at the same time. So instead of trying to find the right number of covers you can accept in each so that you don't overload your kitchen. Now you can say, I'm going to create a facility group. This is a feature that existed previously. Um, you create a facility group and you include all the dining facilities that are going to be sharing that same back of the house resource that can't be overloaded during service. Um, once you create the group, then you can apply um, thresholds against it, uh, thresholds where you can set up ranges just like you would in the regular threshold config. The difference is once that threshold is reached and it, it adds up all the covers across all the facilities in the group, members will be unable to make reservations online um, for that facility. In the back office, you will have more capability. If you have managerial override, you can basically take the reservation despite the threshold. Um, so it gives you a little more control, but it also limits the ability for members to book against the facility, which has already reached, or facility group, I should say, which has reached its threshold. And it'll apply to all facilities in the group. So if you have 50 covers in your dining and grill rooms um, between 6 and 6.30 in a given night, and that's your threshold, then the system will not allow any more reservations to be made uh, during that time range. Um, but it will show them times outside of that threshold of time, which are still available. So it gives you a little more control in terms of being able to fulfill dining reservations 
um, you know, from multiple facilities that are utilizing the same kitchen and that kitchen can only put out so many, um, so many orders during a given service. You can see here where you set up a facility group and then add the facilities that takes us into the Q&A portion of the webinar.